Warning. Although my content is usually family-friendly, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such, will contain blood, language, suggestive themes, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I know I like to spend my evenings doing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Let's hope everyone likes to spend their Saturday evenings watching us play Ace Let's Attorney. Let's hope. I don't know. Anyhow, hey guys, Artie and Marty are back for more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. We are on the day three investigation of Turnabout Goodbyes. This is the last investigation okay. period. I'm guessing people don't realize how many episodes have already been recorded since the first upload, but yeah. We, this is so. This is. Is this the first video since we've uploaded? What? No, we uploaded the first video of Phoenix Ray. Yes. Is it the first video? And then this is the first video that we've made since then. We're at like 20 videos. Or something. I don't know. Okay. Anyhow, December 27th, 2 11 p.m., right in company law offices. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. Previously! <laughs> <laughs> Do you really think that Mr. Edgeworth killed- I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never! Nick! Yo! How's everyone doing? What the heck? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? Swooning? Me? Oh! Oh, yes! I do remember feeling faint! Right on! Tell me the truth! It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh? Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you could do better than that! Come on! I saved Edgeworth in there, dude! Edgy! You guys should be bowing before me! Yeah! Bow before your hero! <laughs> oh my, Larry. Let's present it. Woohoo! I was hot out there! Hot! I'm glad someone's happy about how this case is going. <laughs> he seems too happy to care about anything I show him. Aw, oh, man. No. Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty! <laughs> is he drunk? Oh, but, never but mind. seriously, Nick, that boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Noodles and all. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty edgy. I mean, can you really know if he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know, but what I do know is, I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me! Right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah, why me, Nick? treatment. <laughs> why are you crying, Larry? Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me. Miles. And Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What, was Phoenix gonna be, like, hit by a truck and he's like, I'll save you! And then, like, he's forever in debt? Or is it, like, something weird? Hey, hey, Larry! What is he talking about? Huh? Uh, um... Uh, sorry. I kind of forgot. Hmm. Okay, Nick. Out with it! I'm going to hear the story today and that's final! Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the beginning of spring, fourth grade. I was on trial. A class trial. Oh. A class trial? You remember, Larry? Spring, fourth grade? A kid in my class got his lunch money stolen. Oh. Lunch money? 
Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an en envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 what? still inside. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during P.E. class. I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skipped P.E. that day. I was the only one not in class. So then they blamed him, okay. So, they thought you did it? Yeah. The kids in class said I should be put on trial. <laughs> trial? So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. Aw! Little Phoenix Wright with his I, hair! I didn't do it! Guilty! He did it! Guilty! It was you! Thief! Give me my money back! You're such a meanie! No one play with him! Just admit you did it! You can't hide the truth! Tell us the truth! We're not gonna play with you anymore! Yeah, no bar on my eraser! You should be allowed to play in the relay lace! Or the library committee! Give me back that 50 cents every Hey, did you rob that bank the other day? <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow, dude. Uh, I guess this is Now, you. Phoenix, you should know not to steal people's money! It's not right! In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Apologize to the class, Phoenix. Oh. I, I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went over to where that boy was sitting. I, okay, I kind of understand this because when I was when I was at school, I got my gym shoes stolen, and then one of oh, my yeah. and then one of my friends got her like real earrings stolen out of her locker, and no one could figure out who it was. I figured it out, but no one believed me. So, yeah, this kind of thing could totally happen in schools nowadays too, which is really sad. Yep, that's when it happened. <sighs> he shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed, amateurs. <laughs> Miles? <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> it wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. Oh my god. But, but Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say sorry. Why don't you all shut up? <laughs> this is always how it is. Everyone gaining up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Good job. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were always friends. That's awesome. Wow, I had no idea! Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So, I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Edgeworth's goals. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was the defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my dad. A famous defense attorney. <laughs> I love he's wearing the suit. Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad! It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had become who he became. 
That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa! Nick! So, is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, Nick! 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 We have to save Mr. Edgeworth and it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It may very well be. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd He's settle, a robot. <laughs> I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Hey, man, what's up? December 27th, detention center, visitor's room. Hey, yo. You look as grim as always. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard a story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In fourth grade? Lunch money? Oh, oh right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney! Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. <laughs> that said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So, simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey. Check it out! <laughs> Sorry. I'm not sure I can help you with that. Alright, fine. Let's talk. Oh, and then let's examine the dude. Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had been not sound of mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. I wonder if he accidentally killed him. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. No, he doesn't! He's such a jerk! <laughs> I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So, he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life. He has no personal life. <laughs> Maybe he goes on a spa treatments occasionally, but like other than that... Well, not yesterday, not today. He's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But... but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it's impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job, to find the suspect guilty, perfectly. In any case, 
It's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! Mm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Well, see ya. <laughs> oh no, we, we can do more than that. I'm sure. Hey, look at this parrot. My body want a quacker! Sorry, <laughs> I don't like parrots. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't think we've ever actually checked this file. Oh. It's the DL6 incident case summary. Now I know why people are terrified of getting lost in elevators. <laughs> December 28th, 2001, Elevator District Court. Air and elevator was oxygen depleted at the time of incident. Incident, no clues found on the scene. Gregory Edgeworth, age 35, defense attorney trapped in an elevator returning from a lost trial with son Miles, age 9. Why One... was his son with him? He probably came to watch his dad's trial. Mm. It's like to kill a mockingbird. Bring your dad to work day? Oh, I've never seen <laughs> Bring your dad to work day? Bring, bring your son to work Bring your kid. Well. Bring your daughter to work day. I don't know what it's called To again. Kill a Mockingbird was a movie, but it was a book first. And it's a good book. Mm -hmm. The murder weapon is fired twice. Suspect data, Yen Yogi, age 37. Court bailiff trapped with the Edgeworth's memory loss due to oxygen deprivation. After his fian after his arrest, fiancé Polly Jenkins committed suicide. Uh, that's not good. That's really sad. And why? N Nick, no! That's a photo of his father! Don't show him that! You're right. Now probably isn't a good time to dredge up those memories. What is it? Um, n n nothing. Hmm. That, it was that case that changed my life. And tomorrow, on December 28th, its statute of limitations runs out. Tomorrow. Could that be a coincidence? But, even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. Hey, look at this lake photo. What are you showing me this picture for? Um, uh, no reason. You know, I was impressed by your deduction in the trial today. Granted, you were at the end of your rope, but still. Nick, he noticed! Ha <laughs> ha! Alright. Let's get out of here. Yeah, Edgeworth. Uh. Let's go hang out with Grossberg. Yeah! December 27th, Grossberg Law Offices. He's out. Again. When does he work anyway? Now, now, don't be harsh. Guess we'll have to come back later. Wait! What if he's been murdered? Gross. By the, by the weird... No, by the weirdo, um... Known as... The boat shop dealer? Yeah, the boat shop the dealer. The boat shop dealer? Boat shop dealer. <laughs> he runs a casino out of his boat shop. He's the dealer. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, given how weird he is. December 27th, Police pasta. Department, C Criminal Affairs. Hmm. Looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. I want some. Gumshoe? He won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. He shouted something about catching him if the last, it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Let's look at the director. Oh, yeah. This must be the chief of the detectives here. He's glued to his computer screen. What? The, that's not possible! The world ended yesterday?! <laughs> He must be reading predictions for the future on someone's homepage. <laughs> that must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Please, think about what you're doing, Jolinda! Don't take my Tommy away from me! No! He must be doing image training for a nasty divorce argument. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. So worth looking at them. Let's talk to Gord Lake. Talk to Gord Lake, that's a great idea. <laughs> hey pal, long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, eh? I got so worked up I snapped my tie in half. Then why uh, are you wearing it? Sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by the trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal! See ya. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. <laughs> no one could go into the woods today. Stupid. The woods? Where Lotta was camping? Where's Lotta? 
She dead? The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one could go in for a while. I guess Lada's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Where's Lada? Well, she yesterday she packed up her gear and left after her learning the truth about Gordy. So oh. Lada's not in here anymore, y'all. December 27th, Gord Lake Public that would Beach. Be really... oh. Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. Yeah, because Missile ate them all. <laughs> I guess Larry's been too busy with the trial to show up to work. Hey, boo boo. Hopefully he won't get in trouble for that. <laughs> eh. December 27th, boat rental shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer! <clears throat> I'd know that clearing of the throat anywhere. Oh, uh -huh, hello! What might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg! This is no time for idle reticine! Mr. Redworth's trial ends tomorrow! Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Ho ho, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may, be, I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? He wanted to get a boat. You, I was in the mood for some pasta, you know. <laughs> oh. Why are we in here? December 27th, Caretaker Shack. Why not? Uh. Nobody's home. Hello! Hello! Quack. Hey! It's Polly! I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello! Hello! Quack. I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for himself. Oh, herself. It is a girl parrot. Never mind. Squawk. <laughs> Watch, we're gonna like come in. <laughs> Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Oh, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's going to hate me. <laughs> Let's get some pasta. Oh, safe. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, seven, two, two, eight, squack. Let's open it, Nick! Come on! I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aww. But hey, he keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. It's probably like a murder weapon. <laughs> okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Aw, boring! Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Edgeworth?! N -N nick Why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is your time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting in on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. Well, his memory's gone bad, so that's probably why he wrote it down. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for the caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out to Edgeworth, he was prob he was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on uh, Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Added letter from the safe to the court record. He comes back and he's like, Hey, Meg, how about some pasta? <laughs> Wait, did you check my letter? Wait, I don't remember having a letter in there. <laughs> he definitely has memory problems, so... 
Oh, yeah, let's show him the entire murder plot. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge? On me? Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice right, but I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So, he was following this letter then? Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is your time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond? It also says, this is your last chance. Your last chance? Wait, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. W what is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yeah, I could see that. Yogi? Yogi Bear. <laughs> hey, boo boo! I just love renting out boats and picnic baskets. And pasta. Um, the suspect in the DL6 incident, the one who was found innocent... Yeah, so you kind of called that one. Yeah. Yenny Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. Wah! The quake was incredibly strong. It is strong in Japan. I feel like there's not very many places in the U.S. that have really strong earthquakes. Only really the West Coast. Yeah. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long it felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became... unsettled. H help I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier! I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout! You'll just use up more oxygen! That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. At least he lived. Thank goodness for that. In court, Yaniyogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. I in mean, I'd go insane too, so... In the end, the claim passed the court, and Yogi was found innocent. But why would he be mad that he was found innocent? That's the thing. Hmm. Maybe he wanted. Did his wife die? Yeah, his fiance committed suicide after the incident. So maybe he's like, I want to be dead too! So he couldn't. Yeah, maybe. But then he could have just pled guilty. I don't know. Huh, but isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. How about you tell us? You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? He steals his own- A memory Never mind. of a murder. I was about to be, I'm like, he stole his own lunch money and blamed <laughs> it on Phoenix Wright. Just to become his friend. <laughs> I think- I think the time has come to tell all. Sweet. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. That's creepy! I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. Uh, what kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing, in the dark. I mean, yeah, but... Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier! I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout! You'll just use up more oxygen! I... I can't breathe! You... You're using up my air! W what Stop breathing my air! I'll... I'll stop you! Ah! W what What are you... STOP BREATHING MY AIR! No! Father! He's attacking Father! Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was the evidence from that day in court, or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick up the pistol. Get away. 
Get away from my father! Yeah. Arrgh! I kind of called that, actually. And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has run in my ears for the past 15 years. But, but... It's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane these last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Yeah. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it this way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you... You mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about the DL6! Oh, I'm Mr. Ghostberg. <laughs> I knew he'd come in handy. December 27th. I mean, he's in his office. <laughs> Grossberg office. Sorry, I'm at Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grossberg. Oh, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding! I can't believe you're not! No, no, my, my, my. Just calm down and tell me what happened, hmm? It's M Mr. Edgeworth. He, he... <laughs> Sounded like a really weird laugh <laughs> sob. <laughs> that was like the umbrage laugh from Louise. <laughs> that where she's just like, <laughs> I see. <coughs> so Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's, it's only a dream. Only a dream. I wonder. Wh what? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled? Hmm. W well. Also consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined, Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. Why would you throw a gun? He was throwing it, like, to his father, so he could fend off Yogi. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No! I don't believe it! Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. Oh man. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma's an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result? He had a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost, and died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see? Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? I mean, that kind of makes sense. It's only a possibility, mind you. But, a possibility nonetheless. 
Hey, Gosper, did you know I'm an attorney? Er, quite sorry. I have nothing to say concerning that. Oh, come on. Look at this. Oh, she was a beautiful woman. I'm truly sorry about what I did. Huh? Sorry about what? I think I'll stay out of this one. Show him the parrot. This incident took place 15 years ago tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll see the completion of not one, but two trials. All thanks to the Statute of Limitations. However, I'm afraid the damage the DL6 incident has done will never be erased. Or eased, I suppose. Why is his mustache moving? Oh ho! So this is the letter? I don't know why his mustache moves. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? <coughs> his own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait! What is it? This letter! I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Good thing you remember people's handwriting. <laughs> who, whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Miles Edgeworth, Yanni Yogi, or Manfred von Karma? Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe. I'd love to see that. I have to try von Karma. <laughs> Let's do Edgeworth first. Miles Edgeworth? W -w what? Why in heavens would he write something like this? Why, this letter is an attempt to destroy Miles. Think before you speak, Greenhorn. Uh-oh, he's angry. Think again. Oh. Maybe, really? Maybe it was Yanni Yogi? Yanni Yogi? You claim he wrote himself this letter, then followed his own instructions? He is weird. Uh, yeah, I guess that would be what happened. Hmm. Perhaps you think Mr. Yogi has a split personality, hmm? It's possible! It's possible, he's really weird. I think that's definitely a possibility, yes. Hmm. No, I think not. I do not know this Yogi in any case. There's no way I could recognize his handwriting. Oh, right. Yes, right. I'll ask you again. <laughs> wow. I was almost joking, <laughs> Could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Because he was in the Gordy costume um, trying to kill everybody! Well, I'm not sure. Hmm? Von Karma. Von Karma. Whoa, wait! You're right, my boy! This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it! Gosh. I used to see it on all the time on court reports. What?! But, but that means... The, the one who wrote, told Mr. Yogi to kill us! Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. Kill him! <laughs> <laughs> I already hated him, and now I hate him even more. I, nobody likes Von Karma. He's just the worst. He has a weird, creepy smile. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Oh, let's see. Maybe because his father was trying to get rid of his methods. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. Hey, Von Karma. Let's you... hang out. Let's get some ice cream. We can have a little chat. Let's go to the spa. <laughs> Share straws and all that. <laughs> he would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. You know those weird commercials where it's like, oh yeah, like, share a Sunday with, like, an ape or whatever, and there's like... No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no I don't know. You know, it's like from the 50s, they have, like, that picture of, like... I can't think of what it's from, but it's like two people sharing a smoothie and then, like... There's an ape in the back or something, or like another person. I don't know anything what you're talking about Or like, right now. share a smoothie with Santa, I don't know. Share a Sunday with Santa and his friendly reindeer. Something like that where I was like, oh, it's three straws? It's like that. Oh, weird. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just shaking my mouth. Oh, it's, it's like the Friends title card, but yeah, it's like yeah. Phoenix Maya and Von Karma. Or like... <laughs> <laughs> Someone please make that as fan art and send it to me, please. That'd be great. We will frame it and put it on, a, put it on our walls. <laughs> He'll say as much to, in court tomorrow, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh, no! But, but how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That, I do not know. 
fuck, Carl, what was in the elevator? In an oxygen suit that was invisible. <laughs> Every... No! That makes no <laughs> sense. Yet I do not... I, I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What a jerk. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. Oh, interesting. Probably made, like, personal attacks, and he's like... <laughs> what What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory, Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. Wow. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. To the spa! <laughs> a vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Oh, that poor guy. No wonder he's so he's cranky. So he needs to go to Disney World no every once in a while. He needs to go to, like, the spa in Disney. <laughs> the Saratoga Springs Spa or whatever. I just got a ticket to the Disney Cruise Line. I'll be sailing there for the next three months. <laughs> really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacation spots. What do you mean? Europe is a great vacation spot. I've never been, though. I, I know, but there's so much to She makes so it sound like everyone's gone to Europe. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? Okay. Uh, wh when he went on vacation, was, like... Does he have any family? Is it like, oh, but like his He mom? might, he okay. might. Because, like, clearly this guy's not married. There is no freaking way he's married. So. Actually, if you want to know, he is married. His wife never appears. Oh. His man, his poor wife. <laughs> his poor wife who never takes vacations, apparently. But, like, well, imagine. He doesn't, but maybe he's like, I make mom. so much money, you could go to Europe for Maybe, a month. maybe. But I'm imagining his mom's like, you have to take a vacation sometime. And he's like, no, no mom, mom, come on. I, I just want to <laughs> prosecute. <laughs> Oh man, Von Karma is a teenager, that would be <laughs> What would his voice be? The exact same. <laughs> and this is after voice. puberty. <laughs> Apparently. What do we do, Nick? Von Karma's gonna bring up DL6. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. Yeah, but you'll get a lighter sentence for it, like, big time. I know that! I- I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But- but Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself! His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright? If you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg. Thank you! I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials. Hmm. Well, it's a good spot as any. Let's go hang out. Uh, never mind. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. Except let's talk first. What do you think we should do now, Maya? You would know best, Nick. Just do what you do. That should work. Well, had any good ideas? This is all tied to the DL6 incident. We'd better find out as much as we can about that murder before tomorrow. Something that happened back then has a whole yeah, lot of edge worth it like, won't let you know, go. I thought she was going to be like, Man, I really want some burgers, <laughs> and I want to go to and a noodles. waterfall. noodles. <laughs> December 27th, Police Department Criminal Affairs. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you! I don't think Gumshoe will be back coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again? Well, now I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But, I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> how is that gonna work? Von Karma? Yes, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry! I'm imagining Maya and Nick, like, running through the records room, like, Von Karma, you can't take this important piece of evidence! He's like, oh, I want to forge it! <laughs> December 27th, Police Department Records Room. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they haven't had the time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. Uh... Where- what else is in a police station? Huh. One of the drawers here is open. He took something! Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says, unsolved cases evidence. Did you? <laughs> Did you, Von Karma? Hmm? Unsolved cases? Nick! The file for DL6, it's completely empty! W what What are you doing in here? You! Whoa, looking at him straight on, he looks terrifying. What is up with his face? It's like a hourglass? And his eyebrows. How do you know my name? He looks like a weird alien. Huh? Have we met? Well, what are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? <laughs> I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me. Needless fiends to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. For a second, I thought that they had like Hey killed... dude, okay. did you know I'm a defense okay. attorney? For a second, I thought that they had killed Von Kama, disposed of the body, and then like made someone dress up for two seconds. <laughs> to be like, and then he's like, wait, what? And then we're like, aha! <laughs> Fool. You think I, a prosecutor, would give you, a defense attorney, information? Bah! <laughs> Look at that grade A 100 watt smile. <laughs> uh, 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 Mr. Edgeworth was your student, right? A romanticist who could never shed that veneer of amateurism. Romanticist? Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me, a grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? <laughs> so you did. But what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Yeah, it really isn't. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow? Yeah, we sure do, Bowser. We were right. So Von Karma's going to bring up DL6 in court tomorrow. So, as stupid as it is, the only way to progress the plot is to actually present him the letter from the safe. Um... <laughs> I cannot believe we're not gonna get killed for this. Phoenix never didn't learn from the last two cases, where it's like, first time he did this, he got accused of murder himself. Second time he did this, oh look, got killed by the mafia. No, nothing bad's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah no way. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? That's why he was also He's like, a fool. Okay, that, that also explains why he was like, his name isn't important. I told him to burn it after he read it. So you admit it? You, you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Well, you know why he kept it? Because he's like, oh my goodness, my brain ain't what it's supposed to be. I'll just keep it for 40 years. <laughs> yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. W what Nick, what is that thing? Yeah, I a wonder <laughs> why we shouldn't have given him the letter! A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed. Six hundred thousand volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. Come on! Six hundred 
stones? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it. You should be. Now give me the letter. No! No! Whoa! Where are you? Nick, run! Maya! Out of my way! I hope they didn't die. Uh, okay, I was about to say, like, did we just get an, a he game over? He got us. The letter is gone, of course. What? Okay. <laughs> he with took the, the deal six evidence, all of with it. With the scream as loud as Maya's, I feel like the police would have been like, Oh, there's a weird sound coming from the court record. But there's a door, it's just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good on karma. <laughs> Back to having no clues. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Is she dragged off? M Maya! She's dragged off. Oh my gosh! Where is she? Maya, oh, open okay. your eyes! Okay, she's still there. Huh? Maya! Okay, good. She's not blind or dead. The letter! Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, are you okay? I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya! Ugh. There has to be some way I can help her. Show her your defense badge. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya... She's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 incident, evidence number 7, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. At least she grabbed something. I remember. Thought Karma was holding this when Maya jumped in. Put DL6 bullet in pocket. Well... I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Alright, well, now Sir that- Sir is a total scumbag! <laughs> now that we almost got killed, I, uh... Um, For the third time? <laughs> well, not the third time, more like the second uh -huh. time. Second time, we got, like, jumped by the Mafia. This time we got jumped by a stun gun. <laughs> is, is the final case gonna be like, yup, you're on- You know, like, there's the person tied on the tra train tracks. <laughs> is that gonna be the final case? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not spoiling anything about the final case. Anyhow, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. And I'm Marty, and we're basically dead. And tune in next time for the last <laughs> trial period. There's no way we'll be able to do it in one episode. But, well, uh, I think two more episodes will do it. Anyhow, look forward to that. Have a great day, and God bless.